As the ship's personnel already have designated positions and duties in the event of shipboard emergencies, the ship security plan provides for equivalent security duties as well, including the inspection, control, and monitoring of restricted areas, key shipboard operations, and visitors on board. When signing on, you will be informed about your security duties. In order to perform them effectively, Training and drills are essential. A drill should be conducted at least once every three months, or when more than a quarter of the ship's personnel have changed at any time, with crew members that have not previously participated in any drill on that ship within the last three months. This drill should occur within one week of the change. The ship security officer is then responsible for implementing a training schedule on board that will provide adequate and proper security training. This should include training on how to use security equipment, as this is likely to vary in design from ship to ship. It's important that you receive proper training on how to operate the specific security equipment on board. For example, these could be padlocks for securing restricted areas, passes for visitors on board, closed circuit television for monitoring restricted areas. And X-ray machines for inspecting luggage and stores. Duties may include detection and identification of weapons and other dangerous substances and devices. The ship management company sets the policies for the types of weapons that are allowed on board. This must be clearly stated, as any weapon that is not listed in the ship security plan is not allowed on board at any time. You must notify the ship security officer immediately. If you suspect there is a prohibited weapon anywhere on the vessel, aside from the detection of weapons, you may also be given the duty of operating security equipment. You may also be responsible for physical search methods of people, baggage, cargo, or the ship stores. The ship security plan must contain contingency measures and standard operating procedures for different security threats. On receipt of a bomb threat against your vessel, it's essential that you follow the applicable procedures in the ship security plan, which includes assigning personnel to search designated areas of the ship, and outlining what to do if a suspicious package is found. Terrorists can disguise a bomb in many different ways. Instead of looking for a bomb, you are looking for anything irregular or suspicious. Your response to locating a suspicious object will depend on the equipment you have on the ship. Search teams should not use walkie-talkie or radio for communication or reporting. Radio waves could trigger a bomb. Use fixed internal telephones. Some vessels have specialized equipment, such as blast suppression blankets, but most will have to seek specialist advice from a competent shore authority. You will find further details on this in the ship security plan. When searching for a bomb, it's essential that you follow the rule: eyes, not hands, as touching a bomb may cause it to detonate. If a ship is in port when a bomb warning is received, the master, ship security officer, and port security officials. Will discuss the situation and arrive at a collective decision and take the appropriate action. This may involve evacuation of the ship or shifting of the vessel to an anchorage. Each case will be evaluated on the prevailing circumstances and the nature of the threat. If you are required to evacuate the ship as a result of a bomb threat or similar terrorist act. This should be done in accordance with the procedure outlined in the ship security plan, which will include information on where to muster after the evacuation, the correct way to leave the vessel, and what to take with you. If your ship is approached by a small vessel which does not identify itself, it could be carrying terrorists or pirates. If at all possible, it is preferable to stop them getting on board. High-pressure fire hoses directed from the deck can be an effective deterrent, but if you are on a ship with a high freeboard, you may be able to prevent boarding.
by increasing speed and carrying out zigzag maneuvers. However, care should be taken as sharp maneuvers may reduce speed. If your vessel is about to enter an area known for terrorist or pirate activity, there are a number of basic precautions that may be outlined in your ship security plan. If possible, only transit these areas during daylight. If transiting during hours of darkness, navigation lights should be kept on, but all deck and flood lights should be switched off whenever possible. Transit with maximum safe speed, post an extra lookout on the bridge, and increase radar surveillance. Post additional personnel, both as extra lookouts in other areas and to make rounds, and have fire hoses pressurized and ready around the ship's side. Experience has shown that the presence of an alert crew is an important tool in the vessel's defence. If the crew demonstrate that they are well prepared and capable of defending their ship, the pirates may think twice and break off the attack. If pirates or terrorists board your ship at sea, you should follow the applicable procedures as outlined in the ship security plan. These may include. Raising the general alarm and activating the ship security alert system. Broadcast May Day on VHF channel 16 and 08 to alert nearby ships and naval forces. Ensure that all passengers and crew, other than the bridge team, stay together in one safe location or citadel. Most importantly, do not confront the boarders. Wait for outside help.